first of all, I went to prison in Jamaica, and how I ended up getting there was because um, I had a friend of mine who was dealing with some Jamaican guys, and you know, she had come to me and asked me if I wanted to go to Jamaica to do uh, the guy that she was dealing with a favor. And that they would pay me and, you know, don't worry about anything. I'll have a little mini vacation and then I'll be coming home. So I was in a situation at that time, which that's another story that we're going to get into a little later. But I was in a situation to where I wanted to be out of that situation. So I thought, okay, this makes sense. Let me go ahead and do this. I can get this little quick money and then go ahead and get back home. So, the day that I was going to Jamaica, I had actually moved into my apartment the day before. So, I got um, all unpacked. I got everything situated the way that I wanted it. And the next morning, I was leaving to go to Jamaica. Mind you, I had told my sister that I was going. And she said that I probably shouldn't be going. I went ahead and went anyway because, again, I mean, at this point, I was grown. And I was making my own decisions. And I felt like this was something that was going to help me to be able to go ahead and finish doing what it was that I wanted to do for me for my new apartment so anyway I went ahead and I got all packed up and I went got on the airplane I got to Jamaica and I actually stayed there for uh, four days I stayed there in um, Nick Real, Jamaica and it was beautiful I was able to like go on a little mini vacation I stayed in a beach house and I was able to go and eat a lot of the foods that the locals eat and really go to nice restaurants and see the beach and walk on the beach and just really enjoy myself however when it was time to go um, mind you I hadn't touched anything I hadn't touched any packages I didn't know anything about what was going to be in the packages other than I thought it was money they told me it was money and it was so funny because so many people argue the fact of how could you not know but I honestly did not know I mean do you think well I can't even say that if you think that I knew would I do it because there's a lot of people that know what they're doing and they actually do it anyway just to get a dollar however me I didn't know anything about what was going on I just figured they said that I was going to pick up money after a while um, years down the line or even maybe months down the line hindsight told me why would you be going to pick up somebody else's money anyhow so this is what happened as I was coming in the airport to get back on the plane to come back to California which is where I resided at the time um, I had all my belongings I had the carry-on luggage that I had came with my purse and I had a leather jacket because when I left it was raining in California so keep in mind this leather jacket was a straight giveaway because uh, if I was doing something wrong because you don't need a leather jacket in Jamaica it's warm out there it's a tropical you know country so I get to the airport I'm walking through the line they're checking my boarding pass and then they check my ID at that time you didn't need to have a, a passport or anything like that to go out of the country um, nor did you need to have the real ID so I ended up um, waiting in line and as everyone was getting ready to walk to the plane I saw some um, officers walking towards me so they checked my boarding pass and they asked me to come with them and I'm thinking to myself okay but you know still in my mind like why I go ahead and I go with them and they take me to a little small room and they had a little cocker spaniel which was their drug dog that they were using and so the dog was just barking like crazy and I still didn't know what was going on I um, sat down and they told me we need you to identify the contents of this package they said um, your name is on this package and actually it was like a big box a big big box and so they said we need you to identify what's in this box because your name is on it and so I said, okay, you know, still innocent and not knowing what the hell is going on. And I'm thinking to myself, what could be in this package? So um, I went ahead and they opened it up. And when they opened it up, you guys, it, it just looked like a bunch of dirt. They said, do you know what this is? I said, no. They said to me that, um, well, this is ganja. 
and you're going to jail. Oh my God, you guys talk about scared because of, first of all, I'm abroad. Second of all, um, I, I didn't even know that that's what this was. And I just felt bamboozled and tricked and hoodwinked. And I felt like, damn, you know, why didn't she tell me that this is what it was? I asked her repeatedly over and over again, like, what was really going on? You know what I mean? And so my best friend assured me that it was nothing. Um, you're just going to pick up some money and you're coming back. So anyway, they, they go ahead and they said, we need to weigh this. So they weighed it. And you guys, it was 171 pounds of ganja. Now, I didn't ever even heard the name ganja. Now, at that point in time, I was smoking weed. But, again, I'm from California. We were smoking the bomb weed. You know, no seeds, no stems, no sticks type of thing. Sticky, icky, icky. You know, green weed with hairs growing out of it. Buds, you know what I mean? Not something that just looked like dirt and was dry. And just, I mean, it was, it was crazy for me to see that. And was like, what? Like... I, I don't know what that is so um, they went ahead and I, I was like so scared of course anybody would be I was super scared and so I said I promised like I I didn't know what this was I go you can take a lie detector test can't you they said to me there are no lie detector tests we don't use lie detector tests we have our sniff dog your name was on the package um, we opened it up it's illegal drugs and you're going to jail now let me tell you something about Jamaica Jamaica is pretty much a poor country now don't get me wrong Jamaica's beautiful and there's lots of resorts there and you know I'm sure that it probably is built up a little bit more since when I went there but um, for the most part it is a poor country and a lot of the people there in Jamaica are pretty much on the sides of the road selling bananas and you know they still wash hand uh, wash clothes by hand and they do a lot of stuff they go and they draw water from uh, the faucets and bring it back on their back and you know it, it's it's not not anything that I had ever dealt with or you know knew anything about living in California um, so that being said uh, I went ahead and I was like, can you do a lie detector test? And they were like, no lie detector tests here. We were like, we don't do that. Um, so they were like, you're going to jail. So I went ahead and, you know, I was super scared. I went ahead and um, they took me to jail. Now, when they took me to jail, you have to understand that in Jamaica, the roads are really narrow and they drive on the opposite side of the the car as they would in the United States and the roads are really narrow and you wouldn't think that another car could fit so and they drive crazy as hell so I'm in the back of this car and I'm handcuffed I'm super uncomfortable the only thing that they're telling me is like you're an American and you're trying to take our um, you're trying to traffic drugs and you're gonna go to jail um, one thing about Jamaica is a lot of people may not know this, but you can smoke as much weed as you want to in Jamaica, but you just can't take it away from Jamaica. They have this uh, huge mountain called the Blue Mountain, and on that mountain, weed grows freely, and you can go up there and you can pick it, you can smoke it, you can get a little bit and put it in your pocket, whatever the case may be, but you cannot bring it away from Jamaica. A lot of times, um, that's how a lot of people get caught. And I also was told that um, a lot of times the shipment is not even supposed to leave. It's not gonna. It's not supposed to leave Jamaica, um, the island. So, actually, what happened with me is I found out later that it was a what they call a suicide run, where I would have been killed because that package was there was a layover in Miami for me to go back to California. That package was supposed to go to the port in Miami and it was supposed to go right back to Jamaica. <sighs> so, found that out. And um, thank God, it, it was almost a godsend that I got caught. You know what I mean? Because had I had got back to California and didn't have that guy's stuff with me, I would have been in big trouble. More trouble than I already was in. So... I also found out in Jamaica that the people, 
that make the most money out there are the lawyers, the police, and the judges. And we'll get into that a little bit later. However, I get to the jail, and the jail, uh, by this time it was nighttime. So by the time I got in there, the jail was um, this little brick building, um, the, the part where you go in and, and you actually get um, booked. So it was this little brick building, and I mean, it was just trash all around. It was disgusting. It was dirty. And so, um, get in there, and they do my fingerprints, and they tell me, make sure you take all your clothes that you have with you. And there's a reason why they told me this. Um, so take all your clothes with you when, when you go upstairs to the cell. Now the cells, um, they were all made of brick, all made of concrete rather, and there was probably on the top level, there was probably, I'd have to say maybe five cells, and I ended up being in the cell all the way at the end. So the four cells, when you first walk up this little tiny stairs to get to, um, sorry the the four cells when you first walk up the little tiny stairs to get to um to the cell um they're all they're really narrow however the last cell that i went in was kind of like a corner cell well it was the corner it was on the end in the corner and so it was a lot larger so this particular cell again everything was concrete um there was six beds in there there was um and they were made of concrete and then there was a, a bench that was actually a bed as well and it didn't have one on top of it but the other ones had a bed on top of it concrete slab and the reason why you're supposed to take all of your clothes is because you have to line your clothes on the concrete slab to sleep on because if not you're going to be sleeping on concrete you know, and there were people that came in there that didn't have anything. Um, for instance, like the locals that were coming in and out um, while I was there, um, they didn't have anything. So they were sleeping on concrete. I guess they were used to it. I don't know. I just know I wasn't. So uh, we get in there. I get in the cell. There's all types of Americans in the cell. And in that particular cell, there was all women. So I met um, a couple of people from Philly. I met a couple of people, women from Canada, um, a couple of people from um, New York. So I met these two girls, one girl named Nikki and one girl named uh, Jen, I think her name was. And they looked like they were just, you know, they were young and they were just in there because they wanted to... Um, get money you know what I mean get fast money then there was these two ladies from Canada and they were in there it looks like they were in there to get fast money too like these people didn't look like they were on drugs or anything the two girls from New York were really young and they just seemed like they were just trying to get fast money the two ladies from Canada they were a little older kind of like my age at the time and at that time I was I was 27 yeah I was 27 years old so, um, they looked like they were probably in their 30s. And they were looking like they were just there to get money, too. You know, they, they were doing it just to get money. Now, there was the two people that came in from Philly, which was this lady named Gina. And the reason why I'm telling you about these people is because they're going to come up later on in the story. So, there was uh, this chick named Gina. And Gina definitely was a crackhead. I mean, Gina was a crackhead. And she came in with this guy named Michael. And Michael was a crackhead too. But they were together. They were boyfriend and girlfriend. They were just doing it to, you know, get extra money. So they could probably go out and get, you know, high or whatever the case may be once they got back to Philly. So, but Michael was in a different cell. So, but he was right next to us. Hold on. <laughs> 